Welcome to Zero to Hero, the series where we teach you how to teach yourself how to play Pokemon VGC. Today's topic is really the first one of the how to teach yourself part. Today we'll be reviewing how to start team building. This may seem counterintuitive, but the best first step when starting team building is to use someone else's team. Let me explain. Just before I do though, make sure to subscribe. Only 0% of viewers are subscribed, so let's change that. When starting VGC, it seems intuitive to hop into the team builder and start working with your favorites. Doing this out the gate will get you nowhere, and will only slow down your progress as a player. Despite what Karen of the Elite Four says about strong trainers using their favorites, if you want to be a strong player, you first need to learn what teams and Pokemon are actually strong. Since the best way to learn is to play, We'll go through some resources that allow you to acquire effective teams in minutes, giving you a quick start on the metagame. Only after you have experience with the metagame and what Pokemon are strong, can you develop a strong team of your own. Following resources are repositories for teams that were used in high level tournaments, achieved a high ladder ranking, or were developed and shared by tried and true players. You can simply copy the team's paste and import them into Pokemon Showdown to quickly start a match. First up is Victory Road, an incredibly useful site where you can register for official events, keep up to date with VGC news, and most importantly today, see top teams from official events. VictoryRoadVGC.com is an easy link to remember. Once on the homepage, click on Event Calendar at the top of the website. This takes you to a list of all official events sorted by region with dates, winners if completed, and links to register if still upcoming. Later in the season, when more events have been completed, you'll be able to look at the top teams and players. Let's take a look at the 2024 calendar since it's already complete. I'll scroll down to North America and let's take a look at the Orlando Regional. You can just click on the name of the tournament and that'll take you to that tournament's results page. Scrolling down will take you to the top cut, which in this case is the top eight. There's always a link to the OTS or open team sheet of the team, which includes everything like moves, items, abilities, and terra type, but does not include EVs. If you scroll down further, there's usually the top 128 teams posted along with their OTS links. Find a team with some Pokemon you like or some Pokemon you don't recognize and would benefit from learning how they work. Clicking on the OTS icon will take you to the Pokey Paste, which lets you have a closer look at the team with moves and items, etc. Once you find a team you would like to try, you can copy and paste the info from the Pokey Paste into Pokemon Showdown to start playing. For EV spreads, many of the top teams have very specific EV spreads, which is part of what allowed them to succeed. Many players keep these hidden from public teams since they can be exploited once known. For practice, feel free to give Pokemon 252-252 4 spreads just to get a feel for the team. Another site you can use that includes EV spreads is VGC Pastes. It'll be linked in the description since it's a big Google Sheets document and their Twitter is linked there as well. This is a community compiled list of Pokemon teams you can use. It's harder to navigate at first glance and not as mobile friendly, but it has a lot more information. Many of these teams do include EV spreads, as well as there's the description of the team and what tournament it's from. The last place to find teams is Limitless Tournaments. This is a website where you can register for unofficial online tournaments and you can see teams similar to Victory Road. You can filter types of tournaments by date and format. These tournaments are usually much smaller than regionals, so the top teams here, while still good, are usually less defined by the meta compared to larger official events. Since Regulation H hasn't had an official event yet, this could be a decent place to start. So once you've found a team you like, get started playing. Make sure to check what items, moves, and abilities your team has and how they fit together. Think about the game plan of the team. For example, does it have a redirector along with a setup mon? Or does it have a trick room setter and a trick room sweeper? Or does it rely on Tailwind with just some heavy hitters? Asking yourself just a few questions like which type of Pokemon are on the team and what role they fill will help give you an idea of how it functions and what your game plan is before you settle on a team. You may have trouble finding success for the first few matches as you adjust to a new team. This is normal, so don't get discouraged. Once you play with a team a lot, you'll get better with it. If there's some aspect of the team that doesn't make sense to you, like an odd move or item that just doesn't feel like it's pulling its weight, feel free to change it. That's another step in the team building process. Adjusting. Players can play the same team differently too, so again, feel free to adjust to your playstyle. Don't change things too much though before you have a handle on the team. Play at least 10 to 20 games before making any changes. Once you've played a good amount, you'll have a sense of what most meta Pokemon do and what Pokemon are strong or common meta picks. You'll also have an idea of what Pokemon you or your team struggle against. If you want to go a step further, try out a team that uses those Pokemon. Playing a team with them will really highlight what their weaknesses are. 
As you play and adjust your borrowed team, don't be scared to swap out a whole Pokemon if they could serve your team or playstyle better. After some time and changes, the team starts to become your own. In my opinion, this is the most effective way to build teams as a beginner and even intermediate player. Even as an advanced player, having a strong starting point is incredibly useful and gives you a wider perspective using another person's team. We will elaborate on this process of adjusting teams in another video, as well as how to start team building from scratch and the minutia on team building like team synergy, compositions, advanced EV spreads, and usage stat slash metagame analysis. Before wrapping up today, there is one more thing that can be very useful when using rental teams. On Victory Road, there's another tab in the top right called Resources. After you hit that, click Team Reports. There are very few of these, but they are full reports of the whole team building process and tournament runs from top players. I surmise there aren't many because players need to do them up and submit them, which takes a lot of time for really no reward, but if you're inclined, these are very informative. Some YouTubers will showcase teams frequently and explain them and play some battles with them and leave the link for you to use, but I find often these teams are not super high caliber, sometimes use gimmick Pokemon or niche Pokemon, which really isn't useful for learning the overall metagame. So get out there and start playing with a rental team and make it your own. Thanks for watching.